Thank you. Mr. Speaker. Jenny uh, Salisa. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. $1.7 billion. That is essentially the fiscal cut that this national government has made in the health services. And, Mr. Speaker, more importantly, what we see very sadly, actually, is this cut hurts our people. This cut, the, 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 the kinds of people who are feeling the full effect of this cut are the people who are the most vulnerable, those who are trying to access our mental health services. Mr Speaker, the number of people who are accessing or trying to access mental health services, Mr Speaker, has increased by 60%. 60%, Mr. Speaker, since 2008. It is just unacceptable that while there's been an increase, a huge increase, in those who are trying to access mental health services, Mr. Speaker, at the same time, we're seeing funding cuts. Mr. Speaker, what is also unacceptable is what we saw earlier on today. The, um, the response of the Minister of Health, the Honourable Jonathan Coleman, saying that it is very left-wing, that, that the folks that actually came and presented the People's Mental Health Report to Parliament yesterday, that, and I quote, they're very left-wing anti-government protesters. Mr Speaker, the folks who compiled this report, regardless of the party affiliation that they have, there are 500 people who actually sent in how they experienced mental health services. And of that 500, 93% of them told us of problems and challenges they are experiencing when they try to access mental health. Only 7% of them actually spoke about positive experiences that they're currently having with our mental health services. Mr Speaker, we are all here as members of parliament, 121 of us. Many of us are voted in by people from our electorates, and some of us are voted in because our parties are voted in because of the party votes. And in that role, we should listen when people actually tell us that they are hurting, when over 500 people are telling us that the mental health services, uh, services in New Zealand isn't working for them, we should listen. We also had in addition to these 500 people, 12,800 people who signed a petition they signed it because they are calling for better services. They are demanding better public mental health services, Mr Speaker. The four recommendations made by the People's Mental Health Report, and I must say, Labor supports many of them. The first, we support the fact that we should restore, restore sorry, the Mental Health Commission. This Mental Health Commission, we think, should never have been, have been gotten rid of. And the, the second thing that we support is uh, one of the recommendations here is that we should have a national education pro uh, program. We think that once we restore the Mental Health Commission, this is one of the things that um, the Mental Health Commission should look at. The report also calls for, an, in, for uh, an inquiry into mental health services so that we identify what and where the most need is for funding, and we support that we should look in to um, an inquiry about this. And the last, which we also applaud uh, from the People's Mental Health Report, is the fact that they're calling for an increase in funding for mental health services. Mr Speaker, in February of last year, there was a call for a cut of $140 million for mental health services. And after that call was made, several people actually came to Parliament, and we believe because of that, the government backtracked, and they gave back $20 million, especially to Canterbury. Mr Speaker, uh, a few weeks ago, I had meetings with teachers, and several of these teachers were from Canterbury. They were telling me that as teachers now of seven and eight-year-olds, they are still getting young seven and eight-year-old kids who are still traumatised by the earthquakes, and they were questioning why is it that it is so hard for them as teachers to refer these children on to mental health services. Mr Speaker, we have a responsibility to ensure that we are adequately serving all of our people, our children in Canterbury, as well as mental health service uh, folks who are just trying to access services. When parents tell us 
that it is only when they say their teenagers are about to commit suicide that they access services. There's something essentially wrong with that, Mr Speaker. They shouldn't have to say that they're suicidal before they can access services. Thank you. Mr Speaker. Sarah Dowie. Well, Mr.